I have the answers ready for you, all your lovely questions. Didn't realise there'd be quite that many. <laughs> I've done my best to get through them though, so let's make a start. How long have I lived in France? Well, uh, my, me and my partner Hoppy moved to France five years ago. Um, we bought a small property in La Cruz, which is just across the border from where La Londe is, about 20 minutes away. Uh, it's a small uh, farmhouse, a couple of acres for our sheep and our chickens and our geese and everything else, the, the whole zoo and the three poodles. Um, and it, it has been lovely. We've renovated it from scratch. Um, so it's, it's been a lot of hard work. It has been like a constant. But we are pleased to say we are almost finished with it now. And we are actually looking for pastures new. Why Chateau de la Lande? I, I wasn't actually looking for a job um, because of the renovations and you know the other stuff I do. Um, working wasn't strictly speaking at the top of my agenda. <laughs> um, not for a couple of years yet until we'd finished our house. However, um, we met Annalise and Dan shortly after we moved to France and we became instant friends. Um, they live not far from us and um, it was suggested after Dan had been here for a while that uh, there might be a vacancy for an assistant gardener and Annalise suggested that I apply for it and here I am. Why gardening? Um, I'm more of a plant hoarder. Uh, I like to buy plants. Um, but my um, both of my parents are very keen gardeners. Their gardens are amazing. So I guess I kind of grew up with it. Um, I've always had a garden. I've been lucky to have you know, a little patch of ground, whether it's just vegetables or flower beds, etc. Um, and currently this, this house where we live now has a huge garden um, full of trees. And I've created uh, like dry stone walls with a uh, like little raised beds for um, for more plants, <laughs> um, most of which Hoppy doesn't know about. <laughs> he will now if he watches this. Um, but yeah, I've created like a, a circular garden, and it's filled with plants like calendula, crocosmia, like bright orange and yellow colours. Um, purely because those were the plants that I was either given or I grew from seed or stole from friends. Um, <laughs> I have grown some really pretty wacky pumpkins this year, um, but uh, and house plants too, uh, which we have no windowsills in our house, so it's been a bit of a challenge. Um, when all the plants come back in to the house after the summer, I put them outside in the summer because it's the climate's okay, and I bring them back in for the winter. You literally can't move for plants. It's a little bit like a tropical house. Yes. Um, I'm still learning what I can plant, what will not survive, no matter what, you know, whatever it says on the label isn't necessarily true. Um, where we are in central France, it's kind of like it's got its own little microclimate and um, it's, it, it can, the extremes in temperature on a daily basis can challenge even the hardiest of plants. So <laughs> I'm still learning. Um, yeah, I do lose a lot of plants at mine, but you know, I've also had a lot of success with um, more tropical varieties that I thought I would never be able to grow. Am I foraging this autumn? Yes, yes, mushroom season is upon us. Um, there's not an awful lot out there yet. There's just the, the starts of, um, of mushrooms in the woods. Uh, my freezer is already like chock full of blackberries, uh, wild apples, like crab apples and things for jams and jellies. Um, with my mushrooms, I tend to dehydrate them and then freeze them. It sounds daft, but I find that when you defrost the mushrooms then, they're not as soggy. And I use them for a lot of Chinese dishes. I do like my cooking as well. Um, and also for soups and stews and practically anything I can put mushrooms in. Where would I like to travel to? Well, me and Hoppy are really, really keen travellers. Um, we love Europe and we would like to see more of it. Um, obviously for the past two years we haven't really gone very far um, and we have set our sights a little closer to home. We would really really like a weekend away at uh, La Rochelle by the sea. Um, I spent a lot of years living by the sea when I was younger and I really really miss the, the sea air, picking up sea glass and just hearing the waves. So hopefully... Where else? 
visit um, Canada. I uh, would really love to go and see the, the mountains. Um, uh, I'd like to go to Italy. Anywhere, anywhere just different, you know. Um, we are planning to get a camper van or possibly a van that we can convert ourselves and um, make it kind of poodle friendly as well because campers aren't really set up for dealing with three big dogs. So it'd be good if we could make our own. And then, yeah, the, the world's our oyster then. We can go where we want. Um, we're not worrying about having to book a and b, &B or anywhere dog friendly. We can just pick a place, so. Do Dan and I laugh a lot at work? Pretty much constantly, uh, if you haven't seen, always. It's usually innuendos and loads of banter. It's... Will I be using the digger? No, I don't use the digger because there's usually a Dan in it. <laughs> What about my animal rescuing? I usually end up with people bringing injured animals to me, like hedgehogs, etc. Um, and I do my best to kind of either get them across to a sanctuary or rehabilitate them myself. Um, but it just happens. I didn't intend to rescue wildlife, but they, there's an awful lot here and they just seem to end up at my door somehow. <laughs> Other hobbies? I really like anything creative and arty, especially sculpting and working with clay. Um, I love travel, obviously, foraging, and um, just spending time with my, my partner and my dogs. And it sounds boring, but I just like being surrounded by home. It's, yeah. So where am I from? Uh, difficult to say, because I, I have moved around an awful lot um, from, from a very young age. So I grew up uh, in the forest of Dean in Gloucestershire. I have then moved to uh, Scotland. I've lived in North Wales, all over the UK and abroad as well. So what's my favourite part of my job? Flame thrower, of course. Um, well, actually, it's the variety. There, there's always something that needs doing at Lalonde, always something to do, never bored. Uh, lots of really exciting projects. As you can see from Stephanie's vlog, um, Davey has come up with a new concept, new uh, garden plans. Um, which me and Dan are busy kind of putting the groundworks in now for. It's just kind of get my teeth into a new project. Um, there's immense job satisfaction, whether it's just like filling a, a basket full of garden goodies for the, for the kitchen at the chateau or um, growing something from seed. It's as simple as that, really. I just love my job. <laughs> and it sounds really corny now, but I do. What animals do I have? I have my three standard poodles. That's River, Wren and Rumour. Um, I have eight chickens and a cockerel. Cockerel's name is Kellogg, off the cornflakes packet. Um, I've got two ducks and three geese, five ewes and a ram, and the rest are this year's lambs. What do I keep sheep for? Keeping the, the grass at a manageable height. Um, I give their fleeces to some of my friends who do ne needle felting and other creative projects. Um, and the rest of the, the, the tatty wool and the claggy wool um, goes to mulch my tomatoes and things like that. It's um, really good for them. Um, I haven't tried to make sheep's cheese, no, because my I leave the lambs with their mothers um, for most of the year, so there isn't any spare milk. However, one of the ewes that I've just adopted is a Lacan milk sheep. hope I've pronounced that right. Um, so she is a milk sheep breed. Um, and hopefully it would be nice to try and make some cheese. What are my own garden plans? Okay, um, at the moment I have a potager with like L-shaped raised beds in the centre, quite a high height, they're about two foot off the ground I guess. Um, it's just easier for my back. <laughs> um, and um, I have other beds on the ground for potatoes, for onions, I grow, um, at this time I've got Egyptian walking onions, which the flower develops into tiny baby onions. And as that swells and grows, it weighs the stem down and it kind of replants itself and grows another onion from the head. And then the same process happens. So instead of a nice, neat, like uniform onion patch, I end up with this green monstrosity of an onion. <laughs> They're great for pickling and um, preserves. What other plants do I grow? So courgettes, pumpkins, uh, beans, I grow salsify, Egyptian walking onions, and uh, flowers wise, everything, just everything. Um, I have a circular lawn surrounded by flowers, as I said before. Um, 
and then the rest of the garden is made up of uh, fruit trees, nut trees and um, we have a massive hornbeam that grows in there and just keeps the garden in sort of semi-shade which keeps, the, keeps it cool in the summer, it's amazing. Um, but it also limits the light so I don't grow much underneath the trees. Um, I have a, in the front garden I've got roses, um, rhubarb, berry bushes, it's a complete and utter mixture but that's the benefit of permaculture. You can just say, oh it's a, it's a permaculture thing and uh, yeah you get to plant things wherever you feel like. Am I from a farming family? I just, I've always liked to, to work outside, so obviously gardening and farming fits in exactly, you know, it was, it was just how it happened. When did I learn to shear sheep? Years ago, I, I had my own flock of sheep in, in England, and um, because I was on rented land, I was finding, at, at shearing time, I was having to go and fetch my sheep from rented parcels of land all over in order to get the shearer to come out and shear my sheep there was a setup cost with every single batch of sheep I had had to do um, and unfortunately that meant that the cost of shearing was extortionate and so I thought okay well sod it I'm gonna do it myself so I um, I went on a shearing course and I worked with a few farmers and learnt the ropes and um, it's gone on from there really I, I'm not an expert sheep shearer I'm not but I know enough to be able to do my own uh, own animals and a few of the friends and, and neighbours as well. Do I like being on the vlogs? Initially this was the, the hardest part of my job at Lalonde, it really was. Um, I found it quite quite intimidating to start with um, but as time's gone on I, I've got used to it, it's, it's just part and parcel of everyday life here at Lalonde. I kind of enjoy it in a way, it's nice to be kind of included and part of the team. Is my current house a renovation project? Uh, it is a restoration project. Um, when we bought it, it had one tap, one light socket and one light bulb. <laughs> um, and we've basically started again from scratch. There was, there was no insulation in there. We could see the tiles uh, from within the house, from the underside of the roof. There was no felting, no nothing. Um, and we have installed heating, we've insulated. We've put a kitchen in, we've put concrete floors in, we've built walls, built ceilings. Everything uh, has been done either by ourselves or with a little help from our friends. Why France? We chose France because we dreamed big. Um, basically, um, we wanted a house with no mortgage. We wanted a bit of land of our own. And the prices in the UK are high. Um, and the prospect of having to learn a new language was nothing. I mean, the, the, the benefits of moving to France completely outweighed the extra effort that we had to put in to, to learn French, to, um, to, to make a new life for ourselves abroad. And yeah, it's been a challenge. I mean, the, the paperwork involved in France, as any expert, expat will tell you, um, we have a, a dossier that travels with us and it's, it's eight inches thick of all the paperwork that we, we require to, um, to get registered for things like healthcare, um, for our carte de séjour, which we both have now, we're both resident with the carte de séjour, and uh, it's it's been it's, it's a minefield of, of new information, new rules, new regulations. But we're 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 getting there. I wouldn't say we're quite there yet, but we're we're getting there. And we 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 just wanted a place to call our own, um, and we're extremely happy. We just love it here. Are our dogs standard poodles? So yes, our three standard poodles. They they are also known as the Caniche Royale in French. Um, they are standard poodles, but they are quite small ones. Um, compared to the, the, the ones you see at Crafts, my girls are, are slightly smaller than that. Um, and uh, they are originally a, a, a hunting dog. Um, they were used to retrieve ducks from water uh, many years ago on the German-French area of Europe. Um, and the, the name Poodle, uh, we think it terms from the, the German word Poodle, which means to splash about. And my girls certainly love water, especially green, smelly water. Do I miss my family in the UK? We haven't been back to the UK in two years, more than two years now. And yes, I really, really miss my family and my best friend. Why do I love the flamethrower so much? It's the fact it's chemical free, peacock friendly, weed control. Um, it is a really, really handy tool and I'm actually getting one for my house because my, 
new project, should I say, has a, a quite a large expanse of gravel um, that I want to keep fairly weed free without using anything nasty because obviously I've got the dogs and animals. I love the idea of Shosugiban. The wood charring to preserve it. I think this would look fantastic, but obviously I'll put the, the idea forward. So what's it like living in France? That's a good question. Um, it's it's now life. I mean, it, it is just amazing. I, I, it's just me being cheesy again. Shut up, Jesse. Well, there's less noise, less stress, less traffic, uh, less people, just, and more cheese. <laughs> is there a chateau or a farmhouse in our future? And is there a... French chateau or farmhouse in the future? Well, uh, no, I, I can't see myself ever living in a chateau. I, I like a simple life and low winter fuel bills. <laughs> However, on the farmhouse front, that's an interesting question. Uh, you'll have to keep watching the vlogs, won't you? What's it like being Dan's boss? Now, um, what's it like being Dan's boss? <laughs> um, have you ever supervised the ball pit at a kid's birthday party? I want to know, does Dan try my patience daily? Hourly? Tony in Los Angeles, um, best response ever. Do I have a social life? What's that? <laughs> yeah, I do actually. We do. We, um, we socialise a lot with our local friends. Um, we go to the lakes. We, we have these beautiful, beautiful swimming lakes surrounded by trees and countryside and it's like the inland equivalent of going to the beach it really is lovely a uh, good place to take the kids we have lots of barbecues in the summer and yeah we, we just make the most of what we have got you know there's a lot of outside entertaining in the summer which has been such a bonus especially as we've all been suffering a bit from lockdown and isolation um being able to socialise outside in the summer months has been fantastic. Nice. Do I like Harry Potter? Of course. And Gryffindor. All-time favourite movie? Uh, I've got a few, actually. Um, Dances with Wolves, Kevin Costner. Like Harry Potter series, obviously. Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings. Um, I also really, really love Avatar. And my all-time favourite movie has to be Disney's version of The Lion King. I know it off by heart and absolutely love every second of it. Could watch it again every day. What's my favourite time of year? My favourite time of year? I'd say sort of spring, early summer, um, before the weeds really get hold of the place and it's all bulbs and blossom, lots of colour. Favourite chocolate? Cadbury's Bourneville. Mm -mm. Coffee or tea? tea. Definitely coffee, dow egg burts, no sugar, lots of milk. Thank you. How do I cope with the Dan Amory bromance? Dan and Amory bromance that's going on. Um, well, we all know that Dan only has eyes for that digger. Woodchuck productivity. So how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? The answer is as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. What would I do if I made big bucks from YouTube? Um, I don't know, I'd probably buy a Land Rover for Hoppy and um, build some stables and have a couple of Frisian horses, I don't know. And what's the most painful aspect of my work? Keeping a straight face. So that was my question and answers. So thanks to all who sent questions in. I really, really had fun answering them all. Uh, sorry if I didn't get around to answering your questions, but there will be time for another Q&A at some point. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you all for watching.